Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Oh dear. Well, I had the guy come out to sort my heating out. He was here literally five minutes after I emptied the cupboard so he could get into a certain area he needed to get into. He was here five minutes and comes to me and said, I've got to get an engineer out to get this sorted. I went, and when will that be? Next year? And he said, no, 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 no. He said, I'll put it through today and I'll put it through as an emergency. Well, an emergency can be any time between now, now and next year. But we'll see. He said it should be here either today, which he hasn't turned up today. Right? Or tomorrow. So it's probably tomorrow. Which means, once again, I can't phone my doctors up to make an appointment to go and see my doctor because I could be going out to see my doctor when this engineer comes out. So once again, I'm putting off the phone call to my doctor till now. What day is it tomorrow? What day is it today, Lee Level? Thursday tomorrow. Oh, I can't do it for us because I've got to go and pick my grandson up. So it looks like I'll be going phoning up Monday. It's not urgent, urgent, where I need to really go. Well, I do need to go, but it's not life threatening. I don't think so, anyway. I just think it's old age. Anyway, we're looking, we're doing part two tonight of Stephen Stone, right, and police, police documents we've got, right, here it is, and um, I'm going to take myself off here and put me down at the bottom. Actually, I'll take myself off there. I'll hide myself behind it. That way you can read it yourself as well. Without my head being in the way. Anyway, so we're reading this. And well, actually, this part here, <laughs> quite funny. Because I wasn't going to read this part tonight. Because this is the part where they interview Jen. Where Detective Hunter interviews Jen. But I think we need to read it <laughs> because then he goes on to where he goes to where he interviews Steph Stefan. And he picks up on all these mistakes he's making. I think he's so glad. So I like this place for this detective. They're not thick. But I've also been doing some mapping. Trying to figure out mapping today. Trying to figure out how to put little flags on there and whatever. You know what I mean? So, I think I've got it sorted. But now, while we're going through this interview, when we listen to the police interview, actual police interview, I will be taking notes, like names of the places he went to and the times and things like that. So that I can try and map it. Because I come across him at down when I was mapping. And where he said he dropped Madeline off. And he said as he drove away he looked through the rear mirror and he could see her walking towards the school. Rummaging through her back. Well, he's then had to do, like, turn round to go down the other way of the road to go back home or to do the vape shop, wherever that is. And I'm thinking, why did you drop her on that side of the road? That means she's got to cross over the main, that main road. And I should imagine it'd be quite busy in the morning. You know what I mean? I would have looped around and dropped her on the other side, the side of the church. 
so she's on the same side as the church and the same side as the school. But it doesn't even in that. I'm going to show that one little clip uh, on the night where he meets up with a, with a detective, with a police officer, law enforcement, and he shows them where he dropped her off, whereabouts he dropped her off. I'm thinking, why did you drop her that side? Why didn't you, if you're looping back round to go back home, why didn't you just loop round and then drop her off on the other side? Didn't make sense to me. Well, it all does now because we know he didn't drop her off out there. He didn't even take her to school. Well, he took her to school, but he didn't drop her off. He went that way as though to make out that he was taking her to school. Right. I'll to be honest with you, I don't even think he did go up that far. I don't think he did. I really don't. So we're going to... Let me just get my phone to time so that I can watch, make sure if any comments come through, I don't miss them. So I really need another screen, a second screen, so that I can pull it all up on there. Maybe one of my kids might buy me one for my Christmas present. Think again, Angie. Think again. Right. Oh, uh... Lady K is talking. He's on. I can't go and watch it. I'll have to watch it later. I like Lady K. She's um, quite funny. You know what I mean? Right. Okay, cake. That's that. Huh? And now we'll get on with looking at what is said. Now, bear in mind, this we're only on page twenty-eight. We only got through twenty-eight pages last night. I'm on of fifty-two, but a lot of it I think we can skip. You know what I mean? Right. It says, Detective Hunt was assigned the missing person case and began his investigation. Detective Hunt conducted interviews with Jennifer and Stefan to gather details regarding Madeline's going, Madeline going missing. On February 27, 2024, at approximately 11.16 hours, after 11, quarter past 11, whatever, Detective Hunt, Detective Hunt, pardon me, pardon me, made contact with Jennifer at her residence. Jennifer stated the following during her statement. Jennifer stated, stated she last saw Madeline at approximately 2300 hours on the 2nd of 25th, 2024. Jennifer stated Madeline went to the guest bedroom to sleep along with Stefan because she just started a new job and needed to get some sleep, which she had not gotten recently. Hmm, right, okay. When you're on medication that knocks you out, you get sleep. I want that medication because I'm awake nearly all night with my flipping feet or my legs or my ankles or my hands, my wrists. All my joints. Where are my joints? So it's well, not just my joints. It's like in my toes, my foot, my ankle, my calf, my knee, my thigh. I tell you, they need to cut me up and just put some decent legs on me. Anyway, to get some sleep, which she had not got recently. Jane first day, Madeline typically sleeps with her. And when Stefan comes into town, he would sleep in the guest bedroom. Hmm. During first day, Stefan moved out of her house sometime in December 23 because he was offered a job by his father who lives in North Port, Florida. 
and I've got that address. I haven't mapped that yet. I only uh, map. I haven't put that on the map yet. Florida. Jane first guy is getting. Stephen has visited two or three times since he moved down. Because Jennifer stated Stefan was planning on staying one week during this time because he was going to help with Madeline. And their dog while she was in training for a new job. Jennifer stated she couldn't remember when Stefan arrived. She stated it was either Saturday or Sunday morning. Well, if you go back to that interview that I've done, played with the mother and the father, the father states he left on the Sunday and he got there about 6.30 in the afternoon, on the evening, because he messaged him or phoned him to say he was there. Right? So, if you're watching on replay, just, and you haven't seen any of my other interviews, any of my other videos on this case, Go back there. I've got them all on, on a playlist, and I normally link the playlist is normally linked at linked at the top of the page. Round about near the end, but not quite at the end. Near the end, but not quite. Click on there, and it'll give you all the playlist, all my videos I've done on Madeline. Go and watch the one where they talk to his parents, and he makes them out to de to be decrepit. They like making the the Firing or wheels sort of thing. Are they how decrepit? They've got more life in them than, they, than he has. I tell you, if I was his parents and I read this, right, or seen this, and read what, he's, what he said about me, about us, I'd be going, you think we're decrepit? We're old, we're decrepit, we're dying. Fine. Cut him off. No more. No more help off us. We're too old and too decrepit to help him. I'd be fuming if it, I thought my son was saying that. I tell you now, if I thought my son was saying that about me, you know what? he knows what would happen to him. He'd be going six foot under wow before me. Jennifer inquired if they ever stopped. No. When Detective Hunt asked Jennifer when she found that information out, Oh, well, I'm gone. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Jennifer stayed the night before they agreed to have Stefan get Madeline ready for school. She's 13. She don't need getting ready for school. She can get up herself. Right? Okay, you might have to get them up, wake them up, fair enough. But they can get up themselves. They can wash themselves. They can feed themselves. They can get themselves dressed. She don't need help in the morning. She knows what medicine she has to take, okay? Perhaps she needs an adult with that just to make sure she has the correct amount. Right? And take her. Jennifer said Stephen was going to take Madeline to McDonald's, but she changed her mind in the last minute. When Detective Hunt asked Jennifer when she found that information out, she said Stephen called at 10, 18 hours in the morning. Jennifer inquired if they ever stopped at McDonald's and Stefan said they didn't, even though he tried convincing her several times. Jennifer said she set her alarm for her own 900 hours, which is when she woke up. Well, this is after he woke after he woke her up at like 8 o'clock. Which it wasn't 8 o'clock because he wasn't there at 8 o'clock. In his own words, he'd left the, the house at 7.30, 7.45. So there's no way he woke up at 8 o'clock. So that was a load of BS. Right. Jennifer left the residence around 9.30 hours to go to an appointment to have blood drawn. Jennifer states she didn't see Stephen before she left. After Jennifer left, Jen, Jennifer left, that is when Stefan called her to tell her about the McDonald's. Stefan also stated after he dropped off Madeline at school, he went to a vape shop, but they weren't open. Jennifer said it, she got back home between 11.15 hours and 11.30 hours, and Stefan was there. Jennifer said it stayed at home she stayed at home until about 14.30 hours. 
until she left to go and pick Madeline up from school. Jennifer said she waited for approximately 10 minutes after the school bell rang for Madeline to come out to her car. Since Madeline didn't come out to the car, Jennifer's date, she couldn't remember she told Madeline to go to her grandmother's office to be picked up. Jennifer called Yolanda, whose date Madeline wasn't there. Jennifer drove around the area looking for Madeline. They went back to the school to speak with someone at the office. The office was closed. You wasted an hour. You was already at the school. She should have just pulled over somewhere. Pulled out the uh, pickup line, maybe. Pulled somewhere else up into another car park because there is another car park. Pulled up into that car park and gone into the school and found out where her daughter was. And I'll show you it on the map. Right, hold on. Let's come out. Let's come out. Oh. Right. Yeah. Right, let's I'll show you the car park. Right, where she, where she could get where I would have gone put it that way. Right? Now I gather this is hold on, let's try and turn this round just a little bit. Take it to three D. No, two D. Right? I gather this would be the pickup, yeah, and they come out and go home. Well, if I'd been at first in the queue and my child wasn't out, okay, I'd go out, go out of here, go up here, pull into the car park, park up somewhere, yeah, and go into the school and find out. Okay, that would have took her to a 420, say, give her a bit of time to maneuver out the pick up line and to drive round again, right? This is Tiny Leaf Boulevard. Okay. Yeah. Right, so... I'll get back over here again. So, she only had to park up here. Can you pay it into the school? Can you tell me where my daughter is, Madeline Soto, please? And she'd have found out by 4.30 that she, her daughter hadn't been there. And then I'd have been phoning the police and getting the police to meet me here at the school, or even if she didn't want to be met at the school, meet at her mother's place. All right, I'll show you where the mother's place is. Uh, I think this is it. Yeah, see, there. She could come out, then after finding out Madeline wasn't in the school, by the school itself, she could drive out, to her mother's and said, look, we need to phone the police. My daughter's not at school. She's not been there all day. I need to phone the police. And phone the police. She could have had all that done by 4.30. Right? But, you know, she wastes time. Anyway, we're not here about her tomorrow. We're not here about her. She, her time will come, believe me. Jennifer drove around the area looking for Madeline and then went back to the school to speak with someone at the office. The office was closed. Jennifer said while she was driving to the school, she placed a call to Sage Ellis, who was Madeline's best friend. Sage said Madeline never made it to school. Jennifer asked... Oh. Oh. Uh, Jennifer asked her, I'm going to highlight it so I, I can see where I am. 
No, no, I like it. Where are we? Yeah. Oh. There. Just so I can keep track of where I'm as well. Jennifer asked her what she meant. And said, I, will, I, we dropped her off close to school. I and we. Um, both wrong. Both wrong. Because she didn't drop her off. And they didn't drop her off. Both knew, the two of them didn't drop her off. It was just one of them. And it wasn't her. Jennifer said she emailed Magdalene's teacher to inquire about her attendance for the day, which confirmed she wasn't in school all day. At that point, so in 911 state, she called 911. Jennifer said she's the one who typically gets Magdalene ready for school, but this week she had Stefan out because of a new work schedule. Jennifer said Stefan has only dropped Magdalene off once or twice in the past. Detective Hunt asked why Stefan would drop her off close to the school instead of a school ground. And she said Madeline was embarrassed to be seen in Stefan's vehicle. Well, I'm sorry, but at that time in the morning, I don't think there's going to be many kids about at school. Why? Detective Hunt inquired about Madeline's biological father, Tyler Wallace. Tyler lives in Texas, but Jennifer stated she didn't believe Madeline would be making way to Texas to see her father due to the limited contact they had with each other. Jennifer said Madeline left her debit card and cellular mobile phone. I can't say that word. Cellular. Cellular. Can't say. We call them mobile phones here in the UK. Because they're a phone and they're mobile. Jennifer said Madeline has ADHD and she would leave her phone at home How often. Jennifer also stated Madeline was diagnosed with autism at the same time for ADHD. But doctors recently reassessed Madeline and stated she only has autistic traits but weren't for sure if she had autism. Now, we will go over this section again when we come to Jen again. Because I want to go over that last interview. Right, the last one. Because there's more interviews apparently. Well, it's the last two interviews she's done I want to go over. Detective Hunt asked Jennifer if she could type Madeline's to examine its contents, which she agreed and provided it to him. Detective Hunt asked Jennifer what she thought happened. Jennifer said she didn't think Madeline would run away. She was dropped off between 8.30 hours and 8.45 45 hours, which is earlier than normal, Jennifer said. Stefan told her when he dropped her off, she was rummaging through her backpack, assuming she was looking for her own phone. Detective Hunt concluded his interview shortly after. At approximately 12.05 hours, Detective Hunt then contacted Stefan at Jennifer's residence. Stefan gave the following sworn statement. Stefan stated the last time he saw Madeline was when he dropped her off at school. On the 2nd, 26, 24, between 8.25 hours and 8.40 hours, Stefan said Madeline liked to be dropped away from the school sometime because she didn't want to be seen in a hoop, hoopty car meaning an old car. But to be honest with you, I didn't care what car I was in. If it, if it meant I didn't have to get a bus, especially in the winter, I was happy. Right? But we normally got picked up from school, but not actually took to school because my dad would normally be at work in the morning. So, Stefan said he left Madeline. He was looking at her in the review mirror as she looked, and she looked like she was making her way towards school. Stefan said he went to a vape shop nearby, but they was closed, so he made his way home and spent time with Jennifer. Detective Hunt confirmed to Stefan that he arrived home, back home, around 10, 10 hundred hours, that's right, 
Zhang Fei was there and he said yes. Stephen and said Jennifer was just waking up. This kind of thing, now this is what I love. I love this bit. This statement contradicts what Jennifer said when her alarm went off at 900 hours and she left at 930 hours for her appointment. Stephen said he left to go to the vape shop and went back home where they hung out some more. Stephen said Jennifer wanted to take a nap, so he went to run some errands. Stephen said he went to some car game shops in the area and that is when he got a flat tyre. Stephen said he got a flat tyre on Highway 192. Obviously, I'll write that down. Highway... One, nine, two. Flat tire. Right. Which is supposed to describe as hair raising. Wow. Stephen said he got the flat tire sometime between noon and twelve on the day. Between. Alright, I'm writing down as well. And well, 1400 goes. Stephen was home, you know, so Stephen was supposed to go with Jennifer to pick Magdalene up from school, but said since he got a flat toe, he was late getting home. Of course he was. Of course he was late getting home. Well, Detective from Tax Stephen Stephen to tell him about Sunday night going into Monday. Stephen is heard taking a deep sigh. <sighs> like, really? And said, Madeline was happy and talking about crushes. Now, he wouldn't have been happy about her talking about a cr having a crush on some other lad. He would not have been happy about that. Meaning, boy, she had a crush on. And a singing performance. Stephen said Jennifer requested him to take Magdalene to school in the morning. Stephen agreed since he had done this a few times in the past. When discussing the sleeping arrangements, Stephen said he and Magdalene went to sleep around 2300 hours. 2315 hours. Well, that doesn't match up with the text message. Because the text message was about 2335 hours. Because it was like, make sure uh, Magdalene goes to sleep now, sort of thing. Because Magdalene was wound up from her party. Hmm. Stefan said they was getting up really early so that so they could make good time getting out of the door. Stefan said they got up around zero seven hours on the second and twenty sixth, twenty twenty four. Stephen said he spoke with Jennifer a couple of times while he was in and out of the room, even though Jennifer said he only spoke once about the dog. Stephen said he was impressed that they made such good time getting out the hat door. They were, they were out between 7.30 hours to 7.45 hours. Yeah. <coughs> 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 we know that. <coughs> Because we know at 7.30 hours, he was seen on camera putting a white trash bag or something in the bin. Right, and where are we? Let's go back to... Um, let's get, get, get me this. Uh, yeah, I'll show you where he went. He left that morning. Right. Now that's where Madeline lives here. Right here. 
on this corner. So when he left that morning, he went down that way, around here, to the bins, the trash bins. Because that's where we see him throwing some rubbish in the bin at 7.30. He then left out of here and went whatever way, up that way, right? So, we know he, at 7.30 he was seen putting something in the bin. Detective Hunter asked Stefan where Magdalene left her phone and he said she left it in her room when she was grabbing her shoes or sweatshirt. Detective Hunt spoke to Stefan about the church near where she, he dropped Magdalene off and concluded the interview shortly afterwards. <clears throat> well, we listened to that interview last night. Detective Hunt obtained information from license plates readers and video footage from the area which revealed certain inconsistencies in Stefan's statement. Detective Hunt then contacted Yolanda Zambrano, who is Madeline's grandma, grandmother. Right, well, I don't think we need to read that one, but we will. Right, no, we'll, we'll leave that behind. You don't need to read that. That's just the grandmothers, right? Right, Detective Tag Tagler with the Orange County Chef was also asked to assist with interviewing Stefan during this case. Detective Tagler would eventually become the lead investigator for the Orange County Sheriff's office case. Detective Tagler contacted Stefan at 1412 Santa Maria Drive. Detective Tagler was provided locations where Stefan's vehicle 210 Silver Lincoln MKZ bearing FL tag IYLLH2 had been seen during the time Steve Stephen's day he dropped Magdalene off at school. Detective Tagler confronted Stephen about his locations during the interview, but Stephen would provide answers that did not match up to his vehicle location. So they already knew where Stefan had been by that time they went to interview him. You know what I mean? They already knew where he'd been during the interview, but Stefan would blah, 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 blah. This raised concerns with Detective Tagler as if Stefan was withholding information. Stefan provided consent to search his phone. However, he stated had accidentally performed a factory reset on his phone on the 2nd of the 26th, 2024. Oh dear me. You cannot, you cannot accidentally reset, do a factory reset on your phone. You can't. Detective Tagler gave Stefan Sillard a mobile phone to allow his county to sheriff's office digital forensic unit. Oh, that's in a wrong I'll write down. Orange County Sheriff's Orange County Sheriff's Office Digital Forensic uh, Unit. Right? To download. Detective Tagler then proceeded to the security gate at Venetian Bay to review video. Upon reviewing the security video, Detective Tagler observed Stefan's vehicle exiting the complex with a female wearing a green sweater in the front passenger seat. The female was slumped over to her left, which is an abnormal way for a person to be seated in a vehicle. Right, but was that at the main gate or at the back entrance? At that point, Detective Tagler decided to secure the residence, residence at 40, 4012 Santa Maria Drive for a search warrant. 
And we heard her say in that interview with Jen that they would have to move out that night because they've got to seal it all up. So nearly, nothing can be disturbed for when the forensics come in at like 4.30 or whatever in the morning. The Kissimmee Police Department was notified and asked to assist with this case. Detective Smallwood responded to assist Orange County in the search. The decision was made to have patrol officers from the Kissimmee Police Department secure a location for the search warrant to be executed on the 2nd of 28th of 2024. On February 28th, 2024, I, Mark, Detective Mark Morris, was called to ask to respond to the 412 Santa Maria Drive to assist Orange County in exec executing the search warrant for their missing person case. On my arrival, I contacted Orange County deputies who were waiting for their forensics unit to arrive to execute the search warrant. While Orange County was serving a search warrant on the premises, a subsequent search warrant was executed on Stephen Sellers. I don't know why I even try and say that word. Stefan's mobile phone. Upon reviewing the contents of Stefan's phone, it was discovered several images were saved to Google Drive. A separate search once was served to Google, and upon the receipt of the contents of Stefan's Google Drive, several images and videos were located with depicting an apparent child with a. I'll just highlight it, okay, because I am not. I'm not going to say the words. No, I don't want that crap. Okay, I like, like, if I do it too dark, you see, you won't see. Oh, well, I'm not. Right. Right, opening as the focal point of the pictures and videos. Vile. There were also pictures and videos depicting an apparent child. Right? The child was later identified as. During this time, it was also discovered Stefan did not drop Magdalene off, off at school as he previously stated. Orange County detectives were able to gather information from license plates readers and traffic cameras. This information confirmed that Stefan did not drop Magdalene off at school. In fact, his vehicle was seen driving down safe. driving safe on on road. Right. Okay, so he didn't even go anywhere near the school or the church. Corporal Ilgen and I drove out to Old Hickory Road to canvas the area for possible spots where Stephen may have dumped Madeline's body. We searched several places, however, the results were negative. We also contacted staff at Hickory Tree Elementary to review surveillance video. Deputy Chisholm, the Osceola County Sheriff's Office, was able to assist in watching the video. On 2nd and 26, 2024, at approximately 13, 17 hours, a vehicle matching Stevens is seen travelling south Old Road, south on. Old Hickory Road, Tree Road, passing the school. Right. I'm going to do this. I'll do a separate one with just the maps, right? And going over where he was, at what place and at what time. That's what I'm trying to sort out. Right. There's so many places and so many different times. You've got what he's telling us, and then you've got what the police are finding out and telling us. So, right.
Based upon the suspicious nature of Madeline going missing, it was decided that I become the lead investigator from the Kissimmee Police Department. On February 28th, 2024, at approximately 13 hours, Corporal Elgin and I responded to Owen County Sheriff's Office so I could be briefed on their investigation. Due to this investigation being by, worked by two different agencies, it was decided to have the command centre to be housed at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Deputies had already arranged for Jennifer and Stephen to be trans transported there for a press conference. And we listened to that the other day. I was shown the contents of Stephen's Google Drive where on one fold folder that appeared dedicated to contained over 170 files, 1,700 files, I mean. A majority of these Google, of the photographs and videos show different sexual position. Based upon these images, Orange County Detectives Bank began to author an arrest warrant for Stefan. Due to the fact that most of these images appear to have occurred location, probable cause was provided to take to Detective Moore of the Kissimmee Police Department. Detective Moore wrote the restaurant charging Stefan with I'm not even gonna say that word because I can get into trouble. And possession of child call. I was also informed from license plates readers, surveillance videos and cameras traffic. On February 22nd, 2023, 7.30 hours, Stephen is seen driving his vehicle to the dumpster in Venetian Bay. Stephen is wearing a red shirt and tan pants. Why? Red I'm going to put that down. Because the red shirt plays a big part in this, believe me. Right? Stephen exits the vehicle and throws away two large white trash bags. In the passenger seat of Stephen's vehicle is a white female wearing a green sweatshirt with her head slumped over to the left. The positioning of the female does not appear to be normal and she doesn't move while Stephen is exiting or entering the vehicle. The female appears to be Madeline. On February 26, 2024, at 10, 18 hours, Stephen is driving south on Young John Parkway. Um, John Young Parkway approaching Saka. Having you. Madeline is still in the front passenger seat in the same position. On February 26, 2024, at 8.19 hours, Stefan enters Venetian Bay and exits the rear of the complex at 8.31 hours. Madeline is still in the front passenger seat in the same position. How risky. Oh, my God. He is pulled in, back into where they lived. Yeah. With her sitting in the front seat. Anyone could have seen her. It was in there, what, 8, 19, so 20. It was out by 31. So it was in there 10 to 11 minutes. Anyone could have seen her sitting in that car. Oh, my God. I can't believe how brazen he was. So I'll just put that, 8.30, enters, okay. exits the rear of the complex. Uh, 
at zero eight thirty one. Magrin still in car. So crazy. On February 26, 2024, at 0901 hours, 1 minute past 9, Stefan is driving. I need to give a notepad soon. Stefan is driving north. So at 0901, driving north. Um, international drive and central Florida Parkway. Magdalene. Is still in the front passenger seat in the same position. This confirms that Stefan did not drop Magnum off at or near the school as he previously stated. Right. On February 26, 2024, at. Oh, there's another time. 0935. Stefan is seen driving into the. Ah, listen to this. Parking garage. Of. 9271. Seth. John. Alright. So he's driving away around. Who did I mention South John before? So he'd been scouting the area before he even went back to Venetian Bay. Because he, he went south on John Young Parkway before he even went back at 819. South John. Young Parkway. Stefan drives up to the second level. Second level. And parks near the north east corner of the lot. North east corner. I don't know why I'm writing that down, but because I don't know the east and west of the lot. Of the lot. Probably where he thought it was the quietest. Stefan backs his vehicle into a parking space by the stairs. Stefan exits his vehicle and walks towards the rear of his vehicle, opens the trunk. At 0941, 0941. Stephen is seen placing Magdalene who is wearing green sweatshirt and blue pants in the trunk of his vehicle. Stephen Lang exits the parking garage. He thought by leaving his phone at home they wouldn't be able to track him. How wrong was he? On February 26, 2024 at 10.14 hours. No, it's about 10.14 hours now. Enters. This is how sick he is. Finish. Bye. P. 
through the east gate of the complex. East gate, that would be the back gate of complex. Madeline is no longer seen in the front passenger of the seat of his vehicle. No, because he's moved it into the back, into the boot. He's gone up into South John Young's Parkway, drives up to the second level, opens his boot, goes round to the passenger side, front passenger side, opens the door, takes her out and puts her in his boot. Right? On February 26, 2024, at 10.54 hours, yeah, yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting the hours here, four hours, Stephanie seen driving to the dumpster, Venetian Bay, throwing away more trash. Where's more of the trash? Right. So he's throwing even more stuff of hers. In the trash. What else did you throw in the trash? On February 26, 2024, at 11.22 hours, Stephen drives to South Young, John Young Parkway, East Smoke Line Vape Shop. Stephen makes purchase and leaves shortly afterwards. Oh, so that's why he went there. That's why he went to South, South on South on Young Parkway the first time. You telling me he drove up there to the vape shop the first time with her sitting in the front of that car? I want to write that down so I can get the on the map. Stephen makes a purchase and leaves shortly afterwards. So he's now driving around with her in the boot. I see. Stephen vehicle vehicle then travels east. East. Highway. One on two. Towards St. Cloud. Florida. His vehicle is captured on several traffic cameras as well as a license plate reader. Huh. On February 26, 2024, at 13 16 hours. Stephen is driving south on Tickery. Right. Stephen passes Hickory Tree Elementary. Passes Hickory Tree. Elementary. Uh, you might be thinking, why am I writing this down when I can just refer to this when I'm doing my mapping? It's easy to look at my book and it is to keep flicking from one tab to another, believe it or not. Uh, blah, blah. Passes Hickory Tree Elementary School at 13. 17 hours. Right. On February 26, 24, 24 at 14, 11 hours, Stephanie is driving west on highway. West. Highway one on two 
from old hickory tree road. Stefan's vehicle now has a spare tyre on the rear driver's side of his vehicle. So sometime between 1317 and 1411, he got his puncture and had to pull over to change his tyre. Right. On February 26, 2024, at 1520, 1521 hours, Stephanie is seen throwing items in a dump. Oh my god, what else is he throwing in that dumpster? 1521. Throwing items in dumpster. So that's it, the third time. He's been to the dumpster. Right? Moving east and back. On February 27, 2024, at 03.18 hours, listen to this, Jennifer's vehicle is seen driving east on Highway 192 through Kissimmee to St. Clair, Florida. The vehicle takes the same exact path as Stephen, Stephen. At 0335 hours, Jennifer's vehicle is seen driving south on Old Kickery Road, Tree Road. The vehicle is then seen again turning west on Highway 192 from Old Kickery Road, Tree Road. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm not doing any more notes. I can't keep up with all the times. <laughs> I'm just putting the page to, uh, uh, to where we are. What page are we at? Page 33. Oh, right. Well, does it say it doesn't have to tell you who's driving that car? It doesn't tell you if it's Stefan or Jay. The vehicle then returns to Venetian Bay at approximately 4.30 hours. A more detailed timeline is included with Detective Cabral supplement. Okay. I think I've got that. While the arrest warrant was being written and obtained by Detective Moore at approximately 16.40 hours, I contacted Jennifer in a conference room at the Sheriff's Office. Jennifer was asked questions about Magdalene being missing and the dynamics of the household. Jennifer stated that Joe Stefford had been dating on and off for approximately seven years. Stefan had moved out of the home in the later part of 2023. Well, I heard something today because I was going through the, uh, the, uh, the interviews again and they asked him how long he'd been living there. And he said, oh, a few years, maybe. A few years, yeah, more like seven. When asked if it's normal, that's Stefan and Magnus to sleep together without her being there. And she said, yes. Jennifer stated if she needed to go to sleep due to anxiety, she would ask them to sleep in a different bedroom. Jennifer stated she woke up the next morning by Stefan attempting to put a leash on the dog. Stephen told Jennifer to go back to bed because he would take care of walking the dog. So Jennifer went back to sleep. Jennifer stated Madeline must have got dressed for school in the room because her phone was left on the nightstand. Jennifer stated Stephen said he was impressed on how quickly they was able to get out of the house to go to school. Hmm. Stephen... Stephen, hang on, uh, Stephen told Jennifer that Magdalene was asleep most of the ride to school. Don't you mean D-E-A-D? 
Lại However, he was he was still able to ask her about eating at McDonald's, according to Stefan. Well, according to Stefan, the reason why he, he asked her if he still wanted the McDonald's, she said no. This is what is in his words. So he carried on to the school. But then he turned round and headed back to McDonald's and tried again. And she said no. And I said, why did you turn round and go back to McDonald's? But well, I was still hungry. Hi. But he never once mentioned again that he went back to McDonald's after dropping Magdalene, apparently dropping Magdalene off at school. He didn't once mention about going back to Mac uh, McDonald's thing. <sighs> uh, according to Stefan, Jennifer started they recently ended their relationship and moved back to North Pole, Florida, to stay with parents. Jennifer said she ended the relationship because he was a messy person. Oh, well, come on. Is it because he was a messy... Was it, come on. Get this clear. First of all, you said he moved out because he was offered a job by his dad, which fell through. And now you're saying you ended the relationship because he was a messy person. Okay. Jennifer said they didn't have a sexual relationship because her medications affected her sex drive. Mm -hmm. I asked Jennifer who drives her vehicle and she said only her and Stefan. Jennifer said Stefan took her vehicle Monday night because he decided to go drive around searching for Madeline. This would have been when Stefan travelled back to St. Cloud in the early morning hours of 2nd 27, 2024. Orange County detective, uh, detectives had previously shown Jennifer photographs of St. Stefan's P for identification purposes. Jennifer did not want to believe and Stefan were engaged in sexual activity. Well, it wasn't those engaged, she was being She'd been groomed. Jennifer asked to see the image of Stefan and pulled out a printed picture from Stefan's Google Drive that showed with Stefan's P in her mouth. Jennifer said she didn't recognise anything in the picture as if she was in denial. However, she became visibly upset. Shortly after these questions, I excused myself and told her I was going to speak with Stefan. I contacted Stefan in an interview room at the sheriff's office. Stefan was asleep when I entered. Oh, God, he's had such a hard and long day, hasn't he? He fell asleep. Right? I explained the reason why we were there while... Why we were there speaking with him. I read Stefan his Miranda warnings, which he waved and agreed to speak with us. Stefan stated he'd known Jennifer for several years and dated for most of that time. I asked Stefan what the sleeping arrangements were within the home. Stefan stated Magnum typically sleeps with Jennifer in Jennifer's bed. Stefan stated Magnum wanted them all to sleep in the same bed when he returned home, returned from being away for several months. I don't think so, love, mate. I really don't. That poor girl, when her mum's sending her daughter up to that room with him, she must have felt so broken. You know what I mean? Not even her mum was helping her. In fact, her mum was handing her over to him. Just imagine what a 13-year-old is going through. And mum's not even stopping it. Right? Right, let's have a look. Well, uh... I asked Stefan what the sleeping arrangement were with him. Stefan stated, typically sleeps with Jennifer in Jennifer's bed. Stefan stated 
Magdalene wanted them all to sleep in the same bed when he returned from being away for several months. Stephen stated Magdalene's Magdalene always needed human human contact when going to sleep. Yes, but not you. Stephen referred to it as snuggling. Hmm. I asked Stephen if he stayed in the same room as Magdalene the entire night. Stephen said he was up and down, maybe to drink, drink, grab a drink, but he never slept in the slept in Jennifer's bed. Hold on. I asked Steve Stefan if he stayed in the same room as Magdalene the entire night. Right? Stefan said he was up and down and maybe maybe to, dra- to grab a drink. But he never slept in Jennifer's bed that night. He didn't ask you that. He didn't ask you that. He asked you if you slept in the same room as Magdalene the entire night. He didn't mention anything about did you sleep in Jennifer's bed that night. Stephen stated that eventually made it, make it out of the door. This contradicts the prior statement saying they made a good time. Stephen stated Magdalene would set her alarm for around 700 hours to 730 hours and would then snooze for a bit. Stephen stated they eventually make it out the door. This contradicts his prior statement saying they made good time getting out of the house to drop her off. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Stephen said he was giving Jennifer updates as the morning went along, meaning he was telling Jennifer when Magdalene... Yeah, you are probably telling Ma- Jennifer what was where you was going and what you was doing. Yeah. Meaning he was telling Jennifer when Magdalene was... Mm, Getting dressed and leaving. This also was also not true, as Jennifer stated the only time they spoke is when he was getting the leash on the dog and he told her to go back to sleep. Stephen said they had time to kill since they were too early for school, so he returned home because he forgot his gate clicker for the complex. However, when Stephen arrived at the gate, he had his gate. Yeah, I was just about to say. However, when Stefan arrived at the gate, he had his gate clicker in his hand while speaking with the security guard at the Venetian bank. Yeah, because they're saying, oh, my gate clicker isn't working. Stefan said Magdalene provided deputies to provide Magdalene was wearing a green sweatshirt, black shorts. All right. Stefan said Magdalene was wearing green sweatshirt, black shorts and white crocs when he dropped her off. Dropped her off. This is a different description he provided deputies during the initial contact. Yeah, during the initial contact, it was green sweatshirt, white crocs, black jeans, or jeans, blue jeans. And it was a mum that said, no, no, black shorts. And he's gone black shorts. So yes, black shorts. Probably because someone's. I also heard that apparently, oh, black shorts are what Magdalene walks school daily. Obviously, Stefan didn't realise that. Jen did. Jen knew she wore black shorts every day to school. Right. I am wrong. This is a different description he said uh, provided deputies during the initial contact. As the interview went on, I asked Stefan if Magdalene has ever been sexually active with anyone in the past. Stefan stated there was an incident when she was much younger. Stefan said Magdalene did something with her phone or camera, but she wasn't scolded for it. Hmm. Stefan said she was very young when this happened. I asked Stefan if he provided Orange County deputies to consent to search through his phone, and he stated yes. I asked Stefan if he had a Google account, and he stated he did. Then I asked Stefan if he said pictures to that account, he said sometimes. Stephen stated he did. 
he did have pictures of him and Magdalene saved to that account. When I asked Stefan about all the pictures he had today, so Stefan then asked if he should be talking to a lawyer. Shortly after that, Stefan requested an attorney. Yeah, he knew. I bet I saw. It is like that look of, oh, shit. You know what I mean? You know that look they give? You see it sometimes when you see minion interviews, when they realise they've been caught out. Right. Shortly after that, Stefan was arrested for SB. Um, when the victim was only 12 years old and possession of child call, a search warrant was obtained to collect DNA from Stefan. This warrant was executed by Owens County Detectives and Forensics Unit. Stefan was then transported to Orange County Jail to be held on a zero bond. When I was conducting interviews with Jennifer and Stefan, Detective Belagas from the Orange County Sheriff's Office learned the garbage dumpster from Venetian Bay had not been collected since Stefan is seen on video, throwing several items away. Detective Bilardo raised for the dumpster to be collected and transported to 4978 Alby McLeod Road, where the dumpster was emptied in a secure area away from all other trash. The Orange County Sheriff's Office forensic units responded and assisted in searching through the trash. Oh, what a lovely job. Right. From the dumpster, crime steam investigated located a tire in which tire which in the trash and near the tire was a plastic bag that looked similar to the one Stefan is seeing on camera thrown away. Inside the bag was a black backpack with an Orion print. Inside the black backpack was an Orange County Public Schools laptop belonging to Magdalene Soto. Also in the bag was a single white crock. This crock matched one that was found in the residence where Magdalene resided. These items were collected by the Orange County Sheriff's Office crime scene investigators and submitted into evidence. Right. Oh my lord. What page are we on? Right, we'll keep going. We're we'll keeping going. Right. On February 29th, what time is it? Oh, well, well, let's see what this says here. Well, I want to play this video first, okay? 7 2024, the time is 19.16 hours. We're in Kissimmee speaking with Stefan Stearns. Okay, so we just, I know that you already spoke to the other detective, right, about everything that kind of happened today. If you can just kind of go over it with us one more time, the timeline from like when you guys woke up and took her to school and all, all that. So we woke up early. Um, the plan was that we were going to get McDonald's breakfast on the way. So we made amazingly good time. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, okay? Um, neither of us were here yesterday. So if you can be kind of like specific about like times and, and stuff like that, okay? Um, woke up around... 7, 7.15, somewhere around there, um, which is an early start for us, but she, had, we had talked about getting McDonald's breakfast beforehand, so we wanted to make good time. Um, we did make good time. We got out the door maybe 7.30, 7.45-ish, maybe. Um, got over to that area. She was asleep in the car most of the time, just snoozing until we got there. We got to McDonald's. We're close to McDonald's. I said, you still want it? wasn't interested in the McDonald's anymore, so we continued on. And uh, she wanted to be dropped off a little down the ways from the school. Um, she's got this phase that she's been into lately where she's very particular about what car she's seen getting out of in front of the school. Now, as you're watching, listening to this, if you like me and you took notes, just see how he contradicts what the police have of him. Um, 
through um, video camera, like traffic light cameras and license plate readers. Just compare what he says here to what he's what they know from their information. If you haven't already, please give this video a like and share it and leave me a comment. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. It costs nothing. And hit the all button. That way you'll get to hear about all my videos I put out. I cover all cases, missing and adult cases, cold cases, mass shootings, murder cases, everything. Um, some cars are, my cars are, I guess, kind of hoopties. Um, I get it. It's an image thing. But um, that was sometime probably between 8.20 and 8.40-ish, somewhere in there. It was along the stretch of the road that um, on the right side that has all the communities on it. Mm -hmm. Before you get to the overpass, you could see the overpass from where it was. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was on that side on that stretch of road and that's where I dropped her off she said she was going to go wait for her friends she's going to go find them and hang out and wait for her friends and I asked if that was going to be okay she said yeah it's fine um, kids get dropped off early enough as it is it's not totally unusual for that to happen it's just not usually that early that I drop her off I mm -hmm. do school runs every once in a while for her um, I said, okay, let her out, have a good day, love you, thanks, love you too. And I turned around and was driving away and was watching her in my rearview mirror to make sure that she was going where she was supposed to go. And she was moving in that direction, but she was rummaging around in her backpack or something. What I assumed was probably headphones or something like that, but I find out later that she forgot her phone here, so she may have been rummaging for her phone. Um, but she was still kind of making her way towards towards that direction, so it looked okay. It looked like any other day, and I just continued on. Okay. When you said you dropped her off, like, in the area, kind of, like, where exactly did you drop her off? So if you pull down the street going towards the school, mm -hmm. um, you've got that whole strip of communities on the right side there. Mm -hmm. It was in that stretch of sidewalk there. We pulled in and maybe maybe about halfway up the street or so, and she was like, right here's good. Was it like in one of the apartment complexes, the church? Not in, it was outside one of the apartment. It was just on the sidewalk on the That's side of the road it. there. Just like a tuck and roll, you know? Okay, so like if I were to be on the road, where, With the maps like on. what do you remember seeing that you dropped her off at? I remember the, the overpass is up ahead. Mm -hmm. um, the sidewalk was on the right. Row of trees. There's, I think, a median in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was another community, maybe across from that before you get to the church. Mm -hmm. So it was like before the church. So Town Loop Boulevard is that street that connects to the school. Yeah. Is that, is that the, the street that you. Is this which one? So that's Town Loop Boulevard, right? Town that's Loop, the one yes. that. And where's the school located here? The school's right here. School's right there. Okay, so the school would be on the left in this case. Here's the overpass. So you, can, you guys came from this about. side? Yeah, we okay. came from Town Loop, I think, mm -hmm. which is Town Center. Yeah, so we made it right here and then pulled somewhere, somewhere about. So you came from Town Center and turned onto Town Loop. Yeah, where's where's the church? Is this the church here? Uh, there is. Yeah, so, that's yeah. the church. Okay, yeah. so we weren't up to the church yet. So we were pulled on here and then we pulled maybe about halfway up here. And I dropped her off somewhere in this this area here. And she walked from there to the school? Yeah. It's, it's a pretty she, long way. It's maybe a block or so, but it's not out of the ordinary for her. She likes to do that sometimes. She likes the cold weather. She's wearing her hoodie. Uh -huh. She the cold walk. So you dropped her off near Lilac? Does mm -hmm. that sound right? Yeah, it wasn't at a cross street. It was just at just a bit of the sidewalk there. So did you merge into the sidewalk, or did you stop in the middle of the street, or? I just pulled over to the sidewalk there, let her hop out. How often do you drop her off? This might be the fifth or sixth time I've ever done it. Okay, and when you drop her off, where do you normally drop her off at? 
Um, normally down the street from the school, she requests that a lot. Like the same it, area or somewhere especially else? Especially if it's sometimes in the church parking lot, sometimes just wherever she tells us to let her out, um, as long as it's close, you know. So it's halfway between Town Loop and, uh, and Town Center and the church? Yeah, it's like, it's just in this stretch right here. Like we got about maybe halfway up and that okay. was, was there. The McDonald's that you guys were going to stop at, did you pull into the plaza at any point? No, she 86 the idea before we even got there. What, what do you mean by 86? Oh, poo pooed the idea, didn't want it anymore. Okay. Wasn't in the mood anymore. At any point while you were driving to the school, did you make a U turn? Uh, yeah, I tried to sell her on McDonald's one more time because I was still kind of hungry, but at that point she was also just wanting to get to school. Okay, so where we turned right back around? Where did you make that U turn at? Uh, actually, the school park, uh, not the school parking lot, the church parking lot. Uh, I pulled into that, turned around, and pulled back out. Um, did a UE there and went back to the McDonald's. And she still wasn't having it, and that's when we came back. See, the McDonald's is on the same town loop or town center. It connects to the same road that the mm -hmm. that the, that the school's, school's on. on. Yeah, so, so it's like a straight shot. So you guys came from just so I can kind of get a good vi visualization. Town center and mm -hmm. what? What? Where did you come from? Town center. Uh, town center. So where? Where's the McDonald's? Um, I'm so bad at reading these. I'm sorry. Um, so we we this came. All town center. So we came across uh, on Town Loop, I believe. Is is that the school that is that the road that the school is on? No, this is Town Center. So okay. you said you were on Town Center, and then you made a right on Town Loop, which is yeah. the one that takes you to the school. Yes, correct. Right. I think you but what I'm saying is before town loop, uh, or I'm sorry, for town center, what, what street did you take? Uh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm bad with the streets around here. How, how do you usually get to the school? Uh, I just take John Young and then wait till I see the McDonald's and make a left there and then follow that around. And that goes straight into the, the road that the school is on. And just use, use the landmarks. And I don't memorize the street names. Is that too lucky? Yeah. Yeah, so this is JYP. I'm in at the McDonald's, you turn right? And then you said you made it left at the McDonald's? So yeah, that's so Jung Young Park, where you're going north on Jung McDonald's, and then go around, and then that shoots straight into the road that she's on. Okay. Because that's. I believe that's the correct road. Yeah, well, that's the fastest way to get there. But you told me you came from Town Center and Town Loop. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the street names. Okay. I'm sorry. So I'm doing no, that's okay. So now that we know that you came from Jung Young Parkway and you made a left on Town Loop, mm -hmm. so you yeah, passed the McDonald's. So, yeah, that was when she said no to McDonald's the first time. Okay. So you guys keep on going on Town Loop. Yeah, but at that point, we still had a lot of time to kill. Very early. So what did you guys do? Um, drove towards the school, made a U-turn, came back, tried to do the McDonald's thing again. She didn't want it. So I, where did you, I, one I more time, where her, did you do the the U-turn at? Uh, it, it probably was right by the church because it was still way too early for school. So it was on that stretch of road. I mean, they had the meeting there and the separation, so they, that left turn where the church is, um, you can make the U-turn there. And then after you dropped her off, what did you do? Uh, stayed, talked to her for a minute, told, made sure, you know, is it, is it all right that you're going early because it was it was still early mm -hmm. um she said yeah it's fine i'm gonna hang out and wait for my friends to get there which she does sometimes so it didn't didn't sound you know outrageous or anything um 
that was it. Told her to have a good day. I loved her. She told me she loved me too. I turned around to leave and I was watching her in my rearview mirror. And she looked like she was walking in the right direction. She was rummaging in her bag a little bit, like I said, but still sort of just shambling in the right direction while she was doing it. Um, so it looked, it looked normal. It looked okay. Okay. And then what did you do after you left the area? Uh, I left to go to the local vape shop because I needed some more vape juice. Um, they weren't quite open yet, so I ended up going back home. Um, hung out with Jen for a little while. Waited about an hour or so and then went back and checked the vape shop again. Uh, it was open, so I got what I needed there. and uh, Came back home and hung out with Jen again for a while. Do you remember what time you came home? The first time was probably... right around 10, close to it. And then I waited here and went back to the vape shop, um, probably finished at the vape shop and came back home again a little after 11. Okay. You said the first time that you hung out with Jen for a little bit, right? Yeah. Was Jen here when you got here at yes. 10? Okay. I think so. She might have been at her blood appointment. Let me double check. I know she, was, she had a blood appointment at some point during the day. Oh, it's okay. We don't have to ask her right now. Sorry, everything's a blur. So she might have been here. She might have not have been here. I the believe first time. she was here because she she was sleeping in as much as she possibly could because she's been messed up with her work schedule. So she had to be here because she didn't want to sleep in. Okay. I'll double check, but yeah, I, I believe she was here. And then, what time did you say you left again to the smoke shop? Uh maybe after an hour or so, maybe eleven or so. Okay. And then what time did you get to the small shop? Um, it's maybe 10 minutes away, so not long after that. I stopped in and got some juice. And, uh, What's the name of the small shop? Uh, East Long Longwood. Okay. It's just over off of John Young. It's not far from the school. And then after the small shop, what did you do? Okay, for how long? Um, at least until maybe 1240, 1245-ish, something like that. Um, and then what'd you do after that? Uh, I had a couple errands to run over on 192. Um, she was talking about making a BJ shopping list. Um, she just wanted to make sure I was back in time for us to both go pick up. So I was visiting some card shops around the area on 192. Um, I'm kind of a nerd, so we had a new trading card game release, and I was seeing what the situation was with it. Do you remember what places you visited? Uh, yeah, Coliseum of Comics. Um, stopped by a couple targets, and I was going to go to House Rules Games down by Oak and 192, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't make it that far. I got a flat tire on the way. Do you remember where you got your flat tire? It was on 192. I pulled into over into one of those plazas somewhere. Um, it's been about 10 years since I switched out a tire, though, so I made a lot of rookie mistakes and ended up pinning my thumb between the frame and the, oh, the no. jack. Yeah, I'm lucky it's not a lot worse than it could have been. Do you remember the name of the plaza by any chance? Do you remember like what stores were? It, it was plaza? it was like right before you got to Oak, though, so it was one of those little strips. Okay. Uh, and then but I did not that? make it back in time uh, because of that. I thankfully had the spare. I put that on and tried to get back in time, but caught every red light on the way. She ended up leaving. I was about 10 minutes late on that. So I called her and let her know what happened. I apologized profusely because I promised I'd be there with her to go pick her up. Just sat and waited. After that, she had already gone together, so I just sat and waited and hung out, straightened up the house a little bit. And that was it. Then we got the call. What do you mean you got the call? Got the call from her that had not come out. So we started getting worried. We started making the calls to her family, be on the lookout. She might be walking to you.
Let's just run everything so they start coming down here. I want. Was it? Did you check on the map the the south path? The the, the Greenville. I'm not sure where Greenville is. Um, she forgot her phone, right? Is it normal for her to not have her phone? Unfortunately, she's severely ADHD, as am I am. So it is not uncommon at all, and that very, very usual thing for her to forget things. She'd forget her head if it wasn't screwed on. Uh, we're forgetful about, you know, writing her about that. It will remind her, and then it will leave our mind, and she'll say, okay, and then it will leave her mind. And is she on medication for this, though? Normally, yes. Um, she's been staying with her grandparents a lot this week. Uh-huh. Um, so she has not been getting her meds for a lot. So she was really spacey. Where? Disney. Concierge. What changed in her hours that she needs all this schedule? She's training, so it's not a set schedule yet. Okay. It's just early this day, late closing training this so day. So different hours. Yeah, no, that takes a toll. So I came up here. She needed help. Uh, I split my time between between the two places. I needed a visit. I needed to be a little happier together. So. That was a great thing. Enjoyed me. Just help. Are you worried about my So that is it. the schools up here. Can we messing up the streets again? Yeah, town loop. This one's town side, but town loop. We're just trying to figure out your direction of travel, right? I'm, I'm so sorry. These I'm so bad with that area over there, Hunters Creek. You said you made a U turn mm-hmm. at the church to go see if she wanted McDonald's again, correct? Yes. Did you go anywhere else? Because I know you said you had time to kill. Yeah. Did you guys go anywhere else? No, we didn't go anywhere else. Is there a reason why you would be back on John Young Parkway? Uh, when we tried to go back to McDonald's a second time, we would have made a left over there instead and just looped around again. What do you mean? Just made, made a circle. Made a circle house. Can you show me on the map? Um, so, so this going, is the McDonald's going back right down here, to right? McDonald's. That's the McDonald's right there. Correct. Uh, so going back down and then just straight shot back down. You again. would come down this way? I, I can't read the map. I'm so sorry. Yep, I'll go. Where's the McDonald's? The McDonald's is right here. This is Town Loop. So okay. this is John Young Park. Right? John you guys are coming okay. up John Young. This is McDonald's. Yep. And the school's on this corner. Correct. Over somewhere over here. Mm-hmm. So we come back out here, there, and then we can take a straight shot back down to the school again there. They, they connect. Town Loop and Town Center connect. Right. So, it's, so where did you make the U-turn? The, U, the U-turn was, was on the street when we were going to go back to McDonald's. And then we drove down to McDonald's here. All right. So, so just so I don't get confused. You're going up Jung Young Parkway, right? You're going North Bend. Originally, yes. Right. You make a left make a at left the McDonald's. Here, go towards the school. Okay. How far did you get uh, before you made the U-turn? So we, we got, is this, is this the school over right here? Yep, that's town, uh, town Loop. So we got up to here and then made a U-turn over here, past the median. Okay. So. And back to McDonald's. On Lincoln Town Loop. Still, still time to kill. She still didn't want the McDonald's, but I did give her a raspberry and cheese Danish. So did you go through the drive through Did you no. go inside? No. Didn't go inside. Where did you get the Danish from? Oh, I, the antonyms that I brought from her. I gave a couple of those from the Okay. So she wasn't without food totally. So we just continued past it again and turned around and said, screw it. And just drop you off early. Okay, so you <laughs> came back around to the McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And then right on the school. What's 
Is that back on oh, Zhang Young Parkway? Yeah, or? back on the Zhang Young Parkway. It comes down here. Mm -hmm. And then here's Town Center again. So then you took Town Center yes. the second time around? Yes, and then made it right down to the school. Do you okay. remember what time you dropped her off? Uh, I estimated it to be sometime between 8.20, 8.40. Are you um, on your phone? Do you have um, Google Maps? I do, but I wasn't mapsing it. When you're giving her rights, does she sit in the front or the back? She sits in the front. Do you mind if I look at your maps real quick? Yes. And just to confirm, also, you said, so the second time around, you said you went up uh, Zhang Yun Parkway, you went through town center this time, mm -hmm. made a right on town loop, yeah. and then you said you dropped it off. Right here in this stretch here. Yeah. Around this area. Okay. Which was before the underpass. Correct. Before okay. the underpass, just before the church. Uh, the church was ahead on the left. The underpass was just beyond that. The school was just on the other side of the underpass. So maybe, okay. Maybe, on the left-hand side. Maybe a block away. Okay. And you said that that's typical of her to walk that distance? Yeah, she likes the morning walks when it's cool. Um, she doesn't like getting being seen getting out of certain cars. Um, you know, being a middle schooler, it's an image thing. Um, and she will sometimes like to hang out away for her friends. She's, she's known to do that. Okay. <sighs> do you want to just take a picture of your history? Yeah, that's fine. And that time would have been, you said around 8... 8.20ish, 8.30ish, sometime between 8.20 and 8.40. What time does she go into class? Uh, she has to be there no later than 9.15, doors open at 8. Okay. I mean, doors open at 9, I think. And, and then school officially starts around 9.20 or 9.28, I think. Okay. And when you dropped her off, is that... Earlier than typical, later than typical, around the same Earlier time? Earlier than typical. Really? We had made really good time that morning, and with the subtraction of McDonald's, uh, we had more time than, than usual. Okay. And she said it was okay. She was very confident, convincing that it would be fine. And you saw what direction she walked to after you dropped her? Yeah, it looked like she was moving towards the direction of the school like she was supposed to. Was she still on the right side of the road or did she cross over? She was over? when I left her, yeah, she was still on the right side. What kind of phone is this? Uh, S23. I don't know how to work this thing. I'm sorry, I barely know how to work it myself. I'm an iPhone person. No. Uh, is it okay if I go in your settings real quick? I just want to see if you're logged on to your Google. I am not logged on to my Google with that, actually. Is it okay if I check? Yeah. Does she have any other devices besides that phone? Any other electronics? She had her school laptop with her. Okay. Is that is that uh, still supposed to be with her? Still supposed to be with her, yes. Okay. And what kind of book bag does she carry? Uh, black book bag with like gray, gray, grayish blue hibiscus flowers on it, like a print. When she leaves in the mornings, does she, what does she usually put her front? Um, either in her backpack or like her back pocket, kind of wherever she just thinks to, to put it at the time. Hold on, I don't know how to use this phone. Okay. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. I don't know, you've probably been asked already, but she's never ran away or been away for longer than a certain period of time, uh, amount of time. I, like no, she's, I think she'd know what to do if she did run away. She's not the type. She's a good kid. Besides the ADHD, is she diagnosed with anything else? Uh, yeah, um, she was tested a while back and had some symptoms of autism, so she's 
potentially on the spectrum there. Okay. She was officially diagnosed with it when she was younger, and she was retested and said, well, she shows symptoms of being on the spectrum, but maybe not full-on autistic. Is this what you use to um, go places? Yes. Go places, search addresses, look at store hours, write reviews. Pretty new phone. Oh, Have we had any updates? Uh, we literally have like fifty people right now on scene looking. I don't know if there's any updates. The best person would be the other detective because he's um, he's the one that is in charge of all this. Mm. I don't think I've eaten anything since yesterday. I'm sure you guys are worried. When did you come back to help um, Jen? Is that her name? Yeah. Um, what do you mean? Like, because you lived down south, right? Mm -hmm. When did you come back up north to help her? Um, I just got here this weekend. Do you remember what day it was? Uh, Sunday. Sunday was her birthday party. So, yeah, it was, it was the evening after her birthday party. Sunday. Okay. Do you remember what time you got here on Sunday? Mm, 8, 8.30ish, maybe. Okay. Just in time to make sure that she was doing all her nighttime routines. Mm -hmm. You live in North Pole, right? Yeah, I split my time between the two. Is that on? Split my time between the two. Is that Broward County or? Uh, Sarasota, Sarasota County, Sarasota. Okay. or Charlotte County, either Charlotte. way. Um, it's my parents' house. They, they're old and they need help these days, and they got a house full of poodles. And, it's chaos. So I needed to come back up here and just get away from that. Between two deaf old people yelling at each other and poodles yapping all the time, it's enough to drive anyone up a wall. Just very happy to be back here. Did you, when you guys were looking for the, you guys look? Me and her stayed local. It was all the rest of the family that mobilized and was, was beating the bushes. And, and Did you guys drive together or separate? Uh, I don't think we drove anywhere when we were looking. You didn't drive anywhere? I, not that I recall. Did you guys go anywhere last night? Is that media? Maybe. I think Fox 35 or something. Let me, if it is, let me tell them. Can you see if Okay. Um, I don't recall. You have to ask her if we went anywhere. I don't recall. I was so zonked out on Ativan at that point. Okay. To say it was a wreck. Uh, I don't. And this would have been when? Uh, I don't recall us going anywhere last night. But I, honestly, at that point, my brain was mush, and I was on so many tranquilizers to keep me stable. It's just. You said Ativan? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you usually take that or? Yeah, I have a prescription. I haven't needed it in a long time though. But uh, what's that for? Uh, anxiety. Okay. I was having these rolling panic attacks and breaking down, crying, and I just. Oh, you got Sorry. Okay. And um, this is the only way I could get to sleep last night. And then again this afternoon, that's why I missed your calls. I'm sorry. I so took an Ativan and conked out for a few minutes. It's the only time when I'm not crying. It's okay if I just pop down real quick. Do it. So we're trying to get just a good idea, times, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm giving my best recollections. I'm not a morning person as it is. So a lot of the times are best guess. Uh, but we know that you go up Jung Young Parkway. Down, that's the, yes. the road you usually take um, yeah. to take her. And then you make a left at that McDonald's, right, which is the yeah. town loop. You can make a left to get there either at the McDonald's or at Town Center itself. They both lead to the school. So if you leave her at, just so you get a sense of direction, Jong Young Parkway goes northbound and mm -hmm. southbound. So you're going northbound mm -hmm. into Orange County, making a left at the McDonald's, which is the town loop. You said when you did drop her off, at that medium, you said it was around 8.20, 8.30-ish, somewhere around so, that time? Somewhere in there, yeah. It was, okay. it was early, but not, like, outrageously early, you know? So what would you estimate when you made a left at that McDonald's to be? Uh, after I dropped her off? No, I'm saying when, when you dropped her off. Oh, um, first left... By that McDonald's. Yeah, when you first go, you th that first left that you make at the McDonald's. It had to have been around maybe eight, eight, maybe quarter after eight, sometime in there. Okay. Sometime between eight and a quarter after, I think. All right. So just so it's, uh, you can kind of picture it here on the map. So you're going northbound. You yeah. make a left here around like 8, 10, 8, 15. Let's say 8, 15, around there. When you get over here, she change your. you make a U-turn. You go back to the McDonald's. Yeah. But you said that she still doesn't want the McDonald's. Still doesn't want it. She was just going to eat the danishes that I had given her. So you're going up here now, still northbound on Jong Young Parkway. Mm -hmm. You make a left at town center yep. this time town center then make, a, make right a right onto mm -hmm. yes and the then you drop road. her off around like drop her off around halfway up the road there okay. um, so keep in mind all of this is still northbound okay right you're still northbound on jung young parkway northbound. so why is your car seen going southbound at 810 at i'll show you what location it is McDonald's is over here. Mm -hmm. At 810, your car is seen going southbound at this intersection. So meaning going toward Kissimmee. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten something. I had forgotten my gate clicker. I'm sorry. I forgot I had gone back to the house real quick after we left because um, I forgot my gate clicker. Um, I actually had to go through the front gate and use my parking pass uh, to grab my clicker. So it was the wrong time. I'm, I'm sorry. I, like I said, I was guesstimating these times. I'm not a morning person. Okay. So yes, um, we've gone out. How far did you get before you came back down that uh, when you realized you forgot your clicker? Nearly all the way, nearly all the way to the school. Um, 
and then we turned around. We had plenty of time to kill, so it was time to go back. I rushed back, got the clicker, and that's when I came back here this so way. So you guys came back here to get your clicker? Correct. So when we look at the cameras in the front, it's going to show you coming back in Correct. here it with was, her in the yes, car? Yes, with her in the passenger seat, okay. yes. I know it sounds like we're asking you stupid questions, okay? We no, just want to verify okay. I'm, the I'm times. I'm sorry I'm not being more help. I'm not a morning person. I was half asleep as it was. I'm trying. The clickers to get to get where? To, in, into our neighborhood. Okay. And you, you forgot the clicker where? Uh, I forgot the clicker here. So how, how did you get in? Uh, I was able to use my parking sticker for them to scan to let me through. Okay. So could you not have done that after you dropped her off? I could have, but I also like to come back in from the back gate a lot of the times, and I didn't know if I would be back right away. Um, and sometimes they're busy up front, so it's better not to wait in the line. Is, uh, what, what time is security usually there at the front gate? They were there when I came through. He scanned my ticket. So would it have not just made more sense to drop her off and come back since security is already there? I don't know if it makes more sense. It's just what I did. Okay. There you go. Oh, thank you. Anything else that we haven't asked you feels important? Maybe that might help us out? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble recollecting everything. Uh, I'm going to step away for a second. Hold on. Anything that you remember maybe she might have told you? She didn't mention anything in particular. I made a joke about her Crocs. She wears Crocs and socks. So we were joking about that. Would she say she's usually like a happy, go, you know, very, go lucky girl? Very or? happy. She brings a lot of joy. She's a very good girl. She definitely doesn't feel the same around here if she's not here. She was so happy too. She was looking forward to my visit here. She was looking forward to us all being together. She's just happy. She's just very happy. I've just noticed what he said then. She was a very happy girl. Past tense. Sorry. So you guys, you'd say you guys have a good, pretty good relationship. Yeah, definitely have a very strong bond. Since she goes to when it gets in a fight with her and she needs someone to comfort her and mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm that person for her, you know. How's good most of the time, you know. Not long ago, so she's getting the PMS mood swings and you know, they bite heads, and so as well as you can expect, but otherwise, very loving. Very loving. Yeah. This girl knows nothing but love here in this house, she hardly ever hears a word now. Double edged sword that is. How is she in school? So so, she's so so in school. Like grade wise, she's, she's or doing a lot better though. Apparently, she just made student of the week. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So we're very proud of her. And she's doing singing choir. And she's sounding just amazing. She sang for me last night. And I immediately wanted to show her the movie Sister Act mm -hmm. because because of the choir singing it was so pretty. It reminded me. I told her I was very proud of her. Does she have um? Does she like video games? Anything like that? She does yeah. like video games, yeah. Um, she plays Roblox, Minecraft. I think those are the two big ones that I know of. 
you don't know if her to like ever have any friends on there that she talks to or anything. She like does. That. She does group chats. She does like voice voice chatting too mm-hmm. on it, usually with like her cousins or her friends, uh, and they'll all be playing Roblox or something, and, you know, yelling at each other on the phone. Um, When's the last time you all lived together? Mm, December. December. Okay. December. I think that the reason was for your, your parents down there. Yeah, going down to help them because they're getting on in age and they're making their end of life plans and they need someone to help out. Can you unlock the phone? Again, sure. End of life plans. He makes his parents out to be on their last legs. When you hear them in that interview, she apologises because she comes out like in her pyjamas or something and says, we've just come, um... oh no, that was the neighbour, wasn't it? But they've just come back from somewhere. And I thought, well, he's making out you're decrepit. Um, I have a question. Yes. Sorry, are you guys done? No, we're good. Um, the other detective mentioned that you did not have your phone yesterday? Correct. Tell me about that. I left my phone at home in the morning, too. I was so busy riding her to the door on time that I left my phone. She left her phone. Okay. We both left their phones. Did you have your phone when you went to the smoke shop? Not the first time after I dropped her off. I was still without it. Uh, I got it, got my phone and went back to the smoke shop uh, Okay. later when I got home. And then I also noticed, I was checking your call history. I noticed that you don't have anything before this morning. Is that unusual on your phone? Uh, no, it's it's a new phone. I, stupid. I went to do an update yesterday morning. Um and i don't know what the fuck so pardon me um i don't know what the heck i did but somehow during the massive os update i managed to factory reset my phone and lose all of my contacts all my information mm-hmm. what time was that do you remember oh sometime while i was hanging out with jen jen might know i looked at her and said what what did i just do okay Um, she might know better i don't know what time it was it was when i was here with jen okay i don't think i have any other questions uh do you i don't know where my head was yesterday it was so far up my backside that's okay we understand um in the meantime while we're waiting for all this to get sorted out i am going to hold on to your phone okay Mm -hmm. um i'll give it back to you when we're done Okay. okay. Do you have any questions for us? Um, how long are you going to need my phone? That's. I'm not sure. I'm waiting for my supervisor yeah. to call me. My dad. No, it's just my dad's using that to get a hold of me and get updates. Yeah, they can call Jen's phone. Okay. Did the other detective give you his business card? Um, I believe so. Okay. Well, here's mine in case you want it for any reason. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you. You swear that everything you told us is true? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. I know it's a little hectic right now. (sighs) And I know you were about to head somewhere. If you can just hang tight and refrain from going back in your car, please. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I was actually going to move it over a spot. No, just leave it here. It's fine. Thank you. Case number 24-11313. Today's date is... Uh, February 28th, 2024. The time is 0016 hours. Speaking with Stefan again. Okay. So, as you guys know, they have, right? Mm-hmm. They've been going through the phone and they noticed that there was like a lot of messages between you and. Um, can you explain to me what your relationship is between? Yeah. Right. I'm going to stop it there because 
Yeah. Uh, go to Lexi. Because it's gone two hours. So I'm going to stop it there and we can continue this tomorrow night part three. So if you're watching on repeat, repeat, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Please like it. Please share it. And if you haven't yet done so, please go and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And if you like all things true crime, then hit the all button and you will be updated, informed every time I put a video out or I go live. If you join me on my lives, you can join in with the chat. So until then, stay safe. And thank you all again.